Welcome to Auto Garage Life. It's been a while, but we are back. But I've also done a full video, but we're going to be servicing the Mercedes SL before I put it back on the road. I've had it sorned for a few months over the winter. Reversed it back and forth now and again, started the engine, put the top up and down, make sure everything's ticking over and it's all fine. Had the batteries on trickle charge, but now it's time to give it a service so I can enjoy it once the nice weather kicks back in, probably, hopefully, in a month or two's time. So, what is it? Is it a Mercedes A service or a Mercedes B service? Well, the Mercedes A service is basically oil and oil filter change, visual inspection of the rest of the fluids in the car, top them up if necessary, um, check the tyres, check the brakes, um, reset the service meter and out the door. There you go, a nice lovely bill from Mercedes-Benz, thank you. B service is essentially all of that, plus a cabin filter. But on checking the fluids, of course, they could come up with either a brake fluid change, either coolant changed, or the B service is sometimes followed by a, a single digit code that the car tells you whether it needs spark plugs done, whether it needs the... Uh, rear differential fluid done, etc, uh, etc. Et so there's various other things a B-service could cover um, that you might have additional expense to do. So what are we doing today? Well, it's kind of a bit of both really, because I'm doing things that might not be covered on those lists, but would be extra. So we're going to be doing the oil and filter change. And to do that, we've got the, the man filter there and we have 5W40 fully synthetic oil, 8 litres. Then we'll be doing a power steering fluid flush. And this is the power steering fluid that I found that matches Mercedes-Benz 345 spec. Central hydraulic fluid and it's green. So we're going to be doing that. And here's a top tip while well, I've got the engine cover off to show you this. For everyone that says that the Mercedes M112 engine, and I believe the 113 as well, and the 500, the V8, doesn't have an oil dipstick. Well, you're looking at it right now. All you need to do is buy your own dipstick. Take that plug off and that pipe goes all the way down to the oil pan. The transmission one is that one behind it that says workshop, Mercedes-Benz workshop only, do not touch. Watch what happens when you touch it, watch. <gasps> <gasps> So that's your transmission dipstick. If you follow the pipe, see the pipe there? Going along the transmission, the black pipe? And it goes all the way down to the transmission pan. So they could have given you an oil dipstick from the factory, but they didn't. They could have given you a transmission fluid dipstick, but they didn't. But if you're really wanting to check them both, you can do this on your own. And there's plenty of dipsticks available online that you can just temporarily put in there, check the condition of the oil, bring it back out again. Rather than relying on the computer telling you the level's fine, little myth busted there, little top tip. We're also going to be doing the auxiliary belt and tensioner pulley. Replacing that because the tensioner pulley on startup wobbles a wee bit and we get a little bit of belt squeal, so we're going to be doing that. Coolant is absolutely fine. Coolant was replaced on this car according to the service history not so long ago, so the coolant's still nice and blue. It's fine. The spark plugs, I had them all out when I did the valve cover gasket change. Uh, you can see my video, I'll link it up the top right if you want to go and see that. Check them all, they're all absolutely fine. Brake fluid is still nice and yellow. And we're going to be checking the batteries. The battery voltage tester should be fine. Car starts up, no problem. One of the rears, brand new, just a few months old. Air filters, they're off the car just now, so I've got the cover off, but they were replaced when I did the valve cover gaskets earlier on last year. So we'll be doing all that just now and we'll be checking the tyres. I'll take some measurements of the tyres. The brakes, I know they're all fine. I've had a look at them fairly recently, but we'll do that and write it down as part of this service. Happy days. Let's crack on. You can watch me doing it. Okay, so now we're going to flush the power steering fluid, which is here. And this car doesn't have ABC suspension, so it's a singular reservoir. And power steering fluid in this car should be green. We're going to use this pump to suck out the fluid that's there and we'll replace it with some nice new green stuff that is Mercedes-Benz 345 compliant. Like that. So, 
suck out all the power steering fluid from the reservoir. You can see that red stuff in there. That's not the right stuff. I just put that in temporarily to try and source a leak, but there isn't one. I'm using this vacuum pump just to suck it all out. And then to give it a better flush, we're going to take off this return line here and put the vacuum pump hose into the return line and suck out whatever's in this line and then we'll fill up the rest with the green new power steering fluid. Let's go and do that. Plug for the turn line. Just put that over that. Oh, it stinks, man! It stinks. Just in case you missed it, this is what I was using. That sounds good to go. Our steering's renewed. Old ready, gunky, greeny, old ready stuff is out, and the correct green stuff is now in. We'll get in the car once it's off the ramps, turn the steering lock to lock a few times, make sure all the air bubbles are out, which they should be, and uh, that's us, we're good to go. New power steering installed. Power steering fluid replaced, I should say. What we'll do is once the car's off the ramps, we'll just make sure that level's spot on. And we're good to go. Cool. Okay, so our auto dock delivery arrived, and we've first got the auxiliary belt, which will change, and we're going to replace this tensioner as well, tensioner pulley. So when it's brand new, it will spin about that amount. Take the old one off, and we'll compare that. But when you get this, it will be sprung already, so it will be rotated round, and there's a little pin in there to stop it going back so that you can access this bolt here because when it's on the car you can't see that until you spin it around using this bolt and rotate it around and you can put an allen key or something similar in place and we'll leave this one in to make it easier for us to put on the car so let's go and do that okay so before we remove the old belt we get the professional printout of the belt routing with all the pulleys around it with the proper specs that Mercedes-Benz used when they first fitted it in the factory. And here it is. Check it out. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? It even comes in bright orange cards so you can you can see it nice and clearly. Look, it's even labelled with water pump and alternator and stuff. What a professional job. 17mm socket. And a wee bar, a wee breaker bar. Tensioner back. The belt just comes off now. Nice and loose. This belt doesn't actually look too bad. But since we're here, we'll do it anyway. Around the AC pipes. There we go.
Et voilà. Hey, when you get a new belt, get the two of them, pull them out, stretch them out, and make sure the same length. In this case, we're exactly the same length. Let's have a look and see. So there is a bit of cracking. Just starting on some of the ribs. So it probably is due a change. So for safety, we'll change it anyway. You can see there is a few wee bits and pieces that are just looking a wee bit worn. In general though, it's not too bad. It's actually okay. I've seen a lot worse that have been cracked so badly that you can see the splits, but these are just starting to split in tiny wee places like that. Quite common along the whole belt, so time to change it. Okay, so now we're gonna remove the tensioner pulley and bracket, and to do that, you need to put your breaker bar down again, your 17 mil socket, pull the tension back on the tensioner pulley and then insert one of these Allen keys or something similar into the wee hole. I'll show you on the new one. So the new one comes with a little metal rod in the wee hole. So we have to rotate this round in the engine bay and plonk this in there so we can access that bolt. And it's just those two bolts that are holding it on. Okay, definitely need two hands for that. You can see there, tensioner pulley has been held the little black Allen key, so I can see the bolt down there. Okay, so to take those two bolts out, and we're good. And I took the pulley off just so I could show you that bolt there with the Allen key in it, and that bolt there. Okay, let's get them off. Okay, so now I'm gonna get where is it? Move my finger. You that bolt off. I'm just taking off the one down there. And they are E12 torx bits. Does the job. Let's do that. Come on, I'll you come. You keep these bolts, but you don't get new ones. The the new tensioner. There we have it. An intention of pulley and bracket. Okay. Old tensioner and pulley. New one. So the old one. You bit of wobble. I've tightened it back up since leaking it off. New one. Zero movement. Zero noise. So there we go. Replace them. Stop some noise, noisy belt movement. Right, that's bolt number one. And, if you can see it down there, bolt number two. Dun, 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 dun. That's it, two bolts hold that tensioner pulley on. So we'll tighten them up, and then we'll put the belt back on. And we'll take a little pin out that's at the bottom of that. spring, much stronger spring than the old one, and I'll probably cut my hand. So there's a wee pin out, keep that, just in case I never need to do this job again, or take the belt off again for any reason. Now we get the belt back on. Here we go, one brand new tensioner pulley installed, and new tensioner I should say. You can just buy the pulley on its own, but if it's this cars of this age, you might as well replace the tensioner and that way you know when you're putting a new belt on, it's going to be a snug fit. Excellente! New belt going on. 4 I took the old belt off, we downloaded the official Mercedes-Benz belt routing diagram for use for putting the new belt on. And here it is. 
professionalism at its best. Round the alternator pulley. Oh, yep, yeah, perfect fit. And then we're up round the wee idler pulley. And then down round the first gear pump. And that's the top bit. Just a wee bit footy. Get round the power steering pump. And then round tensioner pulley there. Round the crank there. And we'll do the tensioner pulley bit last. Now, right, once you get the belt routed round where it's going loosely, the last bit to do is to put a socket on the end of that nut there, take the tensioner off the tensioner pulley, and wrap that last bit of belt round. Making sure all the V-ribs are in the grooves properly of all other belts and it'll just tighten up nicely. And there we go. Just make sure the belt is right in the middle of all the pulleys, not overlapping anything. And Tip of the water pump on it kind of goes around it backwards so the ribs don't touch it and the tensioner again the ribs don't touch it they go around backwards and the ribs go around the crank pulley power steering pump and ac pump and make sure everything's perfectly lined up and we're good to go Supposed to be 25 newton meters of torque on that. That is a lot more. The bigger bar. That is ridiculously tight for an oil filter. I don't know who put this on, but it's far too tight. Hand tight, hand tight only. You need to be squeezing the life out of people. Got a little torque wrench that goes down as far as that. Use one. See? That's it. It's one litre in. This oil might not be the best brand, but the next time I'll be using Petronas or Castrol, 
This won't be an engine that long. I'm going to be changing the oil again, approximately four to five thousand miles. I don't stick to the ten thousand miles. I change the oil much more frequently than that. Six. Seven oil. And what we'll do is we'll get the car flat and we'll top it up once we check the level, once the car's back off the ramps. So anyone got a Mercedes Benz engine cover? Thank you. Time for this bad boy to go back on. Because we're nearly there. I've done everything. Service is almost complete. Just need to check the oil level once the car's uh, on the ground and we're good to go. Yeah. Done. Good boy. And don't forget the air intakes. Uno. Duo. Voila. Absolutely perfectly now, no squeals from the belt. Excellent. What I'm doing now is heating it up to temperature so that I can test the oil level with the computer inside the car. Well, it's running, check for leaks. Absolutely none. I've left the under trays off just now just so I can check for leaks. And we have Excellent. Excellent. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to test the exhaust to show how clean the engine's running. So I'm going to hold my phone up to the exhaust and the steam that's coming out of the exhaust will fog up the lens. I'll move the camera away and the lens will become clear. If there's oil or anything dirty coming out of the exhaust, it will just remain dirty. And time to check the tyre treads, depth, and the back tyres, as these ones are, are just under 7mm, both are approximately the same. And the fronts were just about 45 to 4.37, as you can see here. Pretty good.
measure your engine oil level, turn the key to the second position, all the lights come on, don't start the car though, and then hit this button a couple of times, and you'll get to the service, then the engine oil, and it'll say, measuring now, measure correct only a vehicle level, which it is, and there we go, engine oil level, okay, now I've only put 7 litres in this, and it says it's meant to have 8, so what I'll probably do is I'll probably top it up a little bit, um, not too much, but just a wee tiny bit, and then I'll just keep an eye on that as I'm driving the car over the next few days, and we'll see if it still says okay. Now, when you're taking engine oil level in these cars, you, you don't do it with ignition on, and it has to be up to temperature first, the engine, and you have to wait about five minutes or so, or else you'll try that, and you'll get an error message saying observe wait time on this little screen here. So to measure oil accurately, start the car, get up the temperature, let it sit for five minutes, let all the oil settle back down, and then you can measure it at that point and it will tell you engine level oil okay, or top up, who knows. So there we have it, brilliant eh? Okay, so to reset your service indicator, you turn the car on to the second position, but don't start the engine to there, all the lights come on, then you hit this button until you get to the service interval. Now I've just done mine, so mine's just back to 10,000 miles, but what you do is, you hold this down for about 8 to 10 seconds, that screen will then change and tell you hold it down for 3 seconds to reset it, so you lift it off, hold it down for a further 3 seconds and it'll bong and it'll go back to telling you when your next service is due, mine's is now service A, 10,000 miles. Excellent. So there we have it, servicing the Mercedes SL350. Hope you enjoyed that and I'll like and comment and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Thank you.